discussing follow-up data for the alemtuzumab phase three trials, looking out four year, five years. Alemtuzumab is the newest member of the MS armamentarium uh, to treat relapsing MS. It's a monoclonal antibody uh, targeting CD52, which is given in a rather unique fashion. Uh, this is induction therapy. Uh, it has a immunoablative effect with a differential return of cell populations. And uh, it's a different approach to treating multiple sclerosis. A couple things make it different. The, 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 conceptually, the way that you're using alemtuzumab is not a so-called escalation model. Um, you're, you're trying to ablate the immune response and allow the pluripotent stem cells that weren't affected by the drug uh, to then repopulate. And it's, um, it, it's categorically a different way of looking at treating the disease. The fact that it's an infusible drug that's given for five days and then there's a year before you treat again is also novel. And I think it speaks to the, to the biologic effect of the therapy. The latest data is mind-numbingly exciting. The latest data is looking out four years after the last dose, which is another way of saying five years. So it's five-year long-term follow-up. What we saw in the core trial was a very robust and exciting effect uh, as compared to the active comparator, the interferon beta-1a, codename Rebif. And that was a very exciting thing to see, uh, this big difference at year two. You don't have MS for two years. You, have a, you die with MS, not from it. But, but the longer we collect information, the more reassuring it is for clinicians treating MS patients and for patients receiving therapies. And so what we saw this week was the five-year data. And the five-year data, to my eyes, looks every bit as good if not in some cases a little bit better than what we saw at the end of the core trial. Now, that in and of itself is very, very exciting. But when you consider that at five years, 60% of patients never got retreated after the first two courses. Now they're three years past that, and we're seeing 40% of people achieving the definition of NEDA in the treatment-naive population. At, we're seeing 27% of people achieve NETA in the population of patients that had had previous disease activity, the CARE-MS2 population. When you look at the atrophy data, it's unprecedented. At five years, the curves are flattening. In other words, patients with MS have an accelerated rate of brain atrophy. That's the best MRI correlate to disability progression and to cognitive impairment which is a major reason why MS patients leave the workforce. And slowing down atrophy is a tricky thing to do. What we saw in these treated patients was the rates of atrophy slowed considerably in the first two years, but they continued to improve to the point where the, the rate of atrophy curve starts to flatten out. And I've never seen that before. And I'm not seeing it in a short time frame, I'm seeing it in a five year time frame. Very, very exciting effect. I think that when you ablate the immune system, there's some certain risks that you're going to have to entertain. And we saw autoimmunity most specifically. We saw very low rates of infection. Um, so if we stick to the concept of autoimmunity, the question that I had looking at the data is, do we see an increase or a decrease in the rates of autoimmunity or the other concerning signals? And the answer is no. The, for example, we'll talk about um, ITP, right? so immune thrombocytopenia. In the core trials, the, the risk of ITP was 2%. When you go out five years, the risk remains 2%. It didn't increase. That's extremely reassuring for me as a guy treating MS patients with this drug. Moreover, when you look at the distribution of where the ITP events occurred, and in the 12 milligram arm, that's the, that's the dose that we use, there were 24 patients. Only 2.9% of those occurred in, the, in that fifth year. So that tells me that our monitoring program, which mandates that you're checking monthly blood draws for four years after your last dose, in other words, five years, is an appropriate window of time. And so I find that to be very reassuring.